This rather snazzy looking EA Sheen P51 custom paint job by one of the guys in the club. Unfortunately, if you manage to plug the battery in backwards, that's too easily done with these little types of connectors. Unfortunately, it's let the magic smoke out, the thing no longer functions. My idea today then is to get inside, take a look at the flight controller board. Perhaps it's repairable, perhaps not. If not, all is not lost, as you can get the spare parts relatively inexpensively. How then to get it apart? It looks like it's been glued together with some something like the Yoohoo paw that I normally use, a flexible glue. Perhaps with a very dangerous looking weapon, we can separate the wing and take a look inside. Let's see how we get on. Let's try now getting in between the wing and the fuselage. Actually, I can see as I'm pressing it, there's a, some gaps that are opening. I'm just going to use that to my advantage. The other side now. Taking care, obviously we have the servo here, so take care not to dig too deep. I can see the servo wires in there. Obviously need to avoid those. You can perhaps just see in here the sort of stringy glue that I'm cutting through. This is probably one of those jobs that's easier to do the second time. <laughs> There, we can see the wing. The wing has separated, just the servo connection going down onto the board there. The next challenge will be to get the little board out itself, which appears to be glued in using the same sort of uh, flexible glue. We'll come back to that. As you can see by Putting the scalpel down the side of the board, the flexible glue can be separated. Uh, do that down both sides and we can remove the flight controller. Having unsoldered the motor wires at the top here, we can then inspect the board to see if we can spot any damage, any fried components. Now, due to a momentary lapse of reason, I lost the original footage that I took. But essentially, I couldn't find anything that was particularly fried. The two FETs here that control these servo motors look like they've uh, gotten hot at some point, but they're generally okay. I then followed the traces down from the battery connections to this component down here, which is the 3.3 volt regulator that supplies the microprocessor and the gyro. This is a new regulator that I've just soldered on there. When I looked at this component under the microscope, you can see a picture of it on the screen here. You can notice just by the number five, there's like a small mark. From years of experience, I recognize that mark as being where the internals of the IC have gone pop. Indeed, it no longer works. I found this regulator on another board and I've just soldered that onto there. These components are truly tiny, as you can see, and uh, soldering them is an interesting challenge. Let's now then apply some power to the board and see where we go from there. Carefully noting the polarity then let us connect a battery up, or a cell rather. So the ailerons move there, that's encouraging. And the flashing light to indicate that it's in its bind mode. Let's switch on the transmitter now then. And the light has gone solid, indicating that it's bound. So far, so good. I've actually been through this before and something quite bizarre has happened. As you can see, the board 
appears to be functioning correctly. However, if we look at the servo, when I move the aileron control, we've got what would be, I think, the rudder. When I move the elevator, yes, we get the elevator control moving. But the aileron's nothing. You would expect, if it was confused, that the rudder input may affect the ailerons, but no, that's not the case. So somehow the ailerons have appeared on the rudder servo. Elevator is correct, and yes, if I do arm it, you can hear that the motor's working. I have no explanation for this. I would have thought that if the microprocessor was damaged, there'd be no way that it would be able to do complex things like binding to the transmitter. All that appears to have happened is that the channel order is somehow out of out of whack. I have no other term for it. One other thing of interest that I have done, if I remove the aileron connection and connect up PWM test board, bear with me a moment. You can see here on the aileron output, it's set to 1500, i.e. the centre of the throw, and clearly that doesn't control it, and neither does the rudder, and of course not the throttle. I am completely bemused. As far as I'm aware, this board is only used in the Warbird series, all of which have the same controls, and indeed in the Volantex, I think it's the Sport Cub the um, 761 something or other. I've tried my Tyrannus transmitter which controls these models and it does exactly the same. I'm in expert mode at the moment. If I flip it into the gyro mode, you can see that the servos are, are moving to compensate. So even the gyroscope function is working. I can flick the aerobatics, that's not going to do anything. But it's interesting even with the aerobatics, if I flip it to roll, it's obviously trying to roll the model. Well, that's it for this video, then. If anybody has any ideas, then I'm, I'm all ears. Uh, all I can do is wait for a replacement board to come so that we can get this little guide back into the air. Please leave some comments below.